What's going on, everybody? See some familiar faces. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, where are we starting? Uh, from a team perspective, um, it's been a smooth transition. Um, a lot of what uh, j Rob's system uh, is rooted in New England, which is a system I came up under in, um, in Atlanta. And um, so that, that part has been good. Got a lot of good guys in the office um, that kind of help. What's up, JL? <laughs> kind of helps with the, with the transition. Uh, in terms of learning a new city, not there yet. Um, I'd be lying to you if I told you I've done a whole lot. Literally worked go back to my apartment. Uh, I have gone to a Preds game, which was really cool. Um, and I went to a soccer match for the first time on Sunday, which was also really cool. So looking forward to really getting out in the community, uh, learn the community. I love to eat a lot of great restaurants. And so I'm looking to uh, hit them all. The dynamic between you and Ray that go into this process, the player evaluation, getting ready for the draft and free agency, how's that, how's that gone so far? And if there is a difference of opinion, who breaks the tie? So, it's been going really well. Um, like I said in my presser, our foundation of football is the same, right? And it helps me coming into a system that's already established in terms of what it's going to look like to be a Tennessee Titan, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. And, you know, we'll work through it any, any tiebreaker, right? So it's, it's not an ego thing. And, again, I'm coming into this thing with the mind frame of helping him build a team in, in the way he wants to see it. And I'm, I'm in a learning phase of what that looks like and, and uh, what that's going to be. And so um, if there's a tiebreaker, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But right now we're on the same page. I mean, Ryan's done a great job. Uh, Ryan, Ryan's won a lot of football games, as you guys know. Uh, he's been a diligent worker. He's been in the building every day uh, rehabbing and getting his work in. So he's under contract. I'm excited about moving forward with him. And, you know, um, like I said, he's done a lot of great things. I have a ton of respect for him. How does that impact the way that you approach the system with that goal? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a process, right? So you have to evaluate everybody at every position every year. And we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to stack and rank our quarterbacks, whether it's free agency, whether it's the draft, because you got to always look, you know, for, for options at every position every year. You can't settle. And we all know that the quarterback position is, you know, seen as one of the top positions in our league. So you always got to have one. I mean, you look at, you know, JL just walked by, you know, John Lynch ended the year on the fourth quarterback, right? So you got to be good at that position from top to bottom, however you, how many you decide to keep. Ryan is under contract. You know, I know you guys, I, I, I just want to speak freely for a moment. You know, I know everybody wants to make a big deal, you know, out of the quarterback position and whether he will or won't be here. But you guys just have to accept the fact that Ryan is under contract, you know, for us. And right now he's a Titan and he will be a Titan. Well, I mean, honestly, I don't want to speak on his contract status because um, I don't think that's fair to him. I don't think it's fair to his reps because we haven't approached that or thought about that with them. So I don't want to speak about that publicly with anyone. How would you think going through this evaluation process? How much of an advantage do you think it is for you to be able to relate to a lot of these prospects a little more than maybe some of the other teams? I mean, it's, it's, it helps, right, because I've been here. I've gone through this interview process um, as a player. Um, and you just want to make it as human as possible. Uh, you want to create an environment where they can uh, truly show who they are. And I think in, in doing that, you create a comfortable environment. If you come into our interview room, again, you have myself, you have Mike, you have other people in the room that have played the game. And so we're, we're in this uh, space, it's only 20 minutes, right? How much can you really get you know, from someone in 20 minutes? So you really want to create that environment to allow us to get those questions answered that we need. So again, it's we're we're not going to build around one person in particular, right? It's a football team. You know, I was just talking with Mike Keith, and at the end of the day, it's it's like putting a puzzle together, right? You know what that puzzle and what that picture is going to look like when you open the box. So you just got to get there, and so we're still collecting all the pieces to make that pu uh, that puzzle picture come to light at the end. Well, I mean, Traylon's just got to be like everybody else. He's got to continue to evolve and develop, and that'll come. You know, this is he was a rookie, you know, that came in, uh, you know, kind of got off to a little bit of a slow start, but started to catch fire at the end. And so we just got to build on how he, how he ended. 
And Traylon's another guy that's been in the building, has been doing a ton of work, and he's showing that he's committed to the process. So as long as he does that and he does his part, then he'll be a part of the uh, process moving forward. Have you had any kind of conversations with Nate Davis or, or David Long about the So we're not going to talk about, you know, one thing I'll tell you guys, and, you know, we have to, the, the agents that I have spoken to, uh, we won't negotiate publicly. That's, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to, this is, we're, we're a family and we're going to keep family business in house. And when that time comes for us to make a public announcement one way or the other, we'll do that. So, I mean, it was a lot of injuries, you know, we got to start there and, um, you know, and to answer your question about Taylor, Taylor's been a key cog and a you know, super productive member of the organization for a while. So that was you know, a tough move to make, but it was one that we needed to make, and uh, Taylor understood that. Um, but moving forward, we just got to continue to build the O-line, got to be able to, if you're going to have your franchise quarterback or have your franchise running back, however you want to put it, you got to be able to protect those people and open up holes you know, for those guys. So we'll continue to look for those players uh, and, and look to uh, add depth you know, to that as well. In the event of injuries, we'll be able to keep the uh, uh, ball rolling. Point of concern, no. Um, just uh, again, it's it's coming in, um, learning the whole team, right? So it's it's not always a one for one. Again, you're building a football team. We're not collecting talent. You know, every unit on the on the defense, offense, we want to improve to make better. Um, so we'll continue to do that. I just want to get to know the people, right? So they're not playing any more football. So we got that tape. We've evaluated that tape over the last three, four, five, and now six years. So this is an important process to get to know the people. Are they the right type of people to bring into our building? How are you going about meshing your evaluation So I kind of hit on it a little bit earlier. So it's been, um, again, a similar system that J. Rob established. And it was important for me when I came in to make the adjustment to the group. Uh, as opposed to trying to flip the group and make them adjust to me. Um, and again, with the language being the same, um, we're kind of in that same ballpark in terms of how we evaluate the player. So for me, in our meetings that we've had, whether it was free agency, whether it was uh, the college uh, meetings that we had before we got here, uh, I'm more in a position I want to listen. I want to hear these guys speak. I'm getting to know these scouts and what their strengths and weaknesses are. So it's important for me to listen um, at this point. I've done my evaluations. I've done my work. So now I'm listening to them and how they see things. I think you got to be open, right? So the, the game of football, is it's changing. It's evolving. There's no more, you know, real old school. Um, hate to keep going back to the San Francisco days, but we got to a point in our offense where we were playing positionless football. You know, you had a player like Debo, you move around. Christian, you move around. Even George Kittle for things he can do um, at the tight end position. So you got to be ever evolving in your process and not try to set yourself in boxes. Again, it's, you know, I've always said, and it's my, my own personal philosophy, it's cute, it's sexy to play Golden State Warriors football in September and October when the weather's good, but the teams that are playing in January and into February are teams that play tough defense and teams that are able to run the ball, and so you got to be able to do those things. So again, it, it goes back to the work that our area scouts um, do from, you know, from the moment these guys come into these universities to when we get them at this point and leaning on those guys for their expertise, right? And so that's why it's important for me in this, in this stage to listen, to listen and read those players. And I think if you, like you said, you hit on Richard, you can tell pretty quickly how he's wired. 
you know, and you can see those guys who have the dog in them, and you can see guys that, you know, may give you some concern. And if you got guys that give you that concern, then I think you follow up with more visits to see if that's true or if they were in just nervous. Because you got to understand, this is, a, this, is, this is the point in your career where that dream that you've worked the last 20 some odd years, this is, this is the point right here. This is the last step before you realize that dream. So it creates a nervous energy. So you might not see the best from them in that one particular setting. That's why you give them another chance and bring them in to kind of see um, if what you saw was real. It might have. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be an NIL expert. Um, it's not my space. <laughs> I don't know much about that. I've seen a couple things um, that is probably more beneficial for them to return and, you know, all of that. I don't know that space. Um, but, again, you know, when it's – if your goal in life is to make it to the NFL, when that opportunity presents itself, you take it. So I lean on Mike a lot. Um, our offices are right next door to each other. And so I'm in there or he comes to my office. And again, this is his vision of the offense, defense, and special teams. I'm learning that, right? So the best person to learn that from is him. So I go to him, hey, man, am I seeing this correct? I think this guy can do these things. And about, all right, what are we looking for in this? So we met. I met with the assistant coaches um, from each position group and had them put together a 15 to 20 play highlight tape of what they're looking for in every single position. And when they're talking about hand use or, you know, talking about specific moves, put examples on the tape so I can see. So I'm learning their language through that. And so, again, whether it's with Mike, whether it's with Shane, whether it's with Tim or Auk, like we're spending time together so I can learn their language and see exactly what they're talking about when, they're, when we're talking to uh, players. All right. So right now my focus is the Tennessee Titans. Um, I hadn't bothered to look at what the rest of the uh, AFC South is doing. Um, in terms of the building, um, I couldn't have asked to come to a better building. Um, the energy has been unbelievable. The welcome has been unbelievable. And just moving throughout the building, whether I'm on the first floor, you know, or I'm second floor or third floor, um, you know, I just see great people and people that are excited, you know, to, to get this new process rolling. So it's been a – been a good transition uh, that way, but to, to bring it home, what you said, like I'm not focused on the AFC South right now, I'm focused on the Titans. No, it uh, conversation went uh, really well. Um, you know, Frank in the weight room has done a good job of letting me know when guys are around because I'm still getting to know these guys. And so I make sure whether if I know there are players in the building, I go down to the weight room, training room, or locker room where they are just to introduce myself and, and, and let them know that my door is open if they want to have further conversation about anything, whatever it is, and they're more than welcome to come in. And Jeffrey was one of the guys that took the invite. And we sat and had a 20-minute, 30-minute conversation, realized we had a lot of people in common. And so it was really a get to know each other and, you know, break ground. But one, the first question I got when I got the job was from my six-year-old son, and he asked if Jeffrey Simmons was going to be his boy, you know. And so I had to ask Jeffrey if he wanted to be my six-year-old son's boy. So uh, Jeffrey's cool with it right now. I told my son, Jeffrey might not like you. So we'll see when we get there. But um, it was a great conversation, and he's a, a cool dude. One more time. So, I mean, I've been evaluating, you know, Ryan since he came out of Texas A&M, so you kind of know it from that space. Um, but it's been cool to get to know the dude, you know, and, and how he works. And, again, you know, quarterback is one of those diligent working positions, and you see those guys all throughout your building all throughout the year, and Ryan is everything – um, that a quarterback is, you know, like I said, he's in the building every day. He's doing his work and he's around the guy. So I respect that about him. One more time. 
good football players. <laughs> it's that simple. So from that standpoint, really it's uh, having everybody on the same page. And that was the one thing we had in San Francisco was everybody was on the same page. You get to those later rounds, those are the, that's the area scouts, those are position coaches, those are the coordinators are finding those true positional fits um, for whatever system and schemes you want to run. So that's what allowed us to have success um, in San Francisco, and we look to emulate that. We've kind of got the process rolling uh, in terms of linking up our cross-check guys with their position coaches and building that rapport, and we're going to continue to do that in Tennessee. So I think the accelerator kind of enhanced, you know. So, I mean, let's be honest, like, people want what winners have. And so anytime you're looking to hire someone, whether, you know, whatever the position is, they start with winning organizations because you want to em uh, emulate that. So my resume got me to a point, but then the accelerator actually got me in a room with owners that I otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to, right? The only owner that you have constant contact with is the one that, of, that owns your organization that you work for. The Accelerator got me in a room with Miss Amy. I don't know where else I would have possibly met, you know, Miss Amy. Um, but again, it's more than just the Accelerator program. It's the people participating in it because you can't, everybody can show up. But you have to be intentional when you show up. And I think when the Titans got there, um, I guess it was in December, I think they were intentional. Now, granted, it was a long line to talk to them because they had a job that was open and everybody wanted to put their best foot forward. But I appreciate the fact that they were intentional. And again, if you look at their interview list um, that, was, that they interviewed in the process and who the finalists were, uh, the good majority of those people were at the Accelerator program. Appreciate y'all.